In this video, I would like to revisit a parametric curve that I've already computed some information about in a previous video. I've linked to it in the description, but for the parametric curve R of t, defined as t squared over 2, t to the 4th over square root of 8, t to the 6th over 6, we have the following computations. Again, we actually computed these in another video, or you could just imagine that I've handed these to you. So when time equals 1, we know that the velocity vector r prime is the vector 1 square root of 2, 1 by dividing that vector by its own length, or in other words, by dividing the velocity by the speed, we arrive at the unit tangent vector when time equals one, and that was the vector one half times one square root of two, one. So the speed of this curve was two. We found an expression for the derivative of the unit tangent vector, and when time equals one, that vector is negative one, zero, one, which means the unit normal vector, that vector divided by its own length, is one divided by the square root of two times negative one, zero, one. In the other video, what we did was we crossed t and n at this point to find the vector b, and with b, we wrote down an equation of the oscillating plane. What I would like to do in this video as a sequel is look at the oscillating circle. The oscillating circle can be described in terms of these pieces. So with this information, we can find the radius of the oscillating circle and its center, and then we will write down a parametric description for it. I will give you a broad view of that parametric description. So I will tell you what the formula is in general for a parametric curve. We'll find it for this particular curve. Then what I would like to do is take you through an animation showing what's going on with this situation so that you can visualize these components. All right, let's start finding these components. So first, let's find the radius r. That's one divided by the curvature. I don't have the curvature written down here, but it's the length of t hat prime divided by the speed. So if we take one over that, what we can say is it's the speed, the length of r prime, how about at the moment one, because that's where we're doing our computation, divided by the length of t hat at one, t hat prime rather. All right, so the speed of our curve or the length of the velocity vector is two. The length of t hat prime when time is one is square root of two. Two divided by the square root of two is square root of two. To find the center, which I'm going to denote as the vector little c, what we need to do is start at the point on the curve, so that's r of one itself, and then travel the length of the radius along the direction of the normal vector. So that normal vector n hat points in the direction of the radius. So from the point on the curve, we go in that direction, the length of the radius, that takes us to the center. So let's see, r of one itself is going to be one half, one over the square root of eight, that's kind of a funny thing to keep writing. How about I do one over two square root of two, and then one over six, plus the radius we said was square root of two, and then the normal vector actually has this factor of one over square root of two, so that will cancel out, that's nice. And then we have negative one, zero, one. All right, I think I can put this all on this page. So we have one half plus Again, the square root of two and the one over square root of two is cancel out, so let's go ahead and do that. One half minus one is negative one half. And then we have one over two root two plus zero, so that's one over two root two. And then one six plus one is like one six plus six six, so that's seven over six. All right, we have the radius in the center. Now we wanna write down a parametric description that will trace out this oscillating circle. Let's give ourselves some more room. So I'm going to take the information we have so far, that's all the information at the top, together with the radius and center. And now I think this is enough room to write down the oscillating circle. Okay, so here's the general expression for how to parametrize an oscillating circle. I'm going to call this r sub c just because I already named the original curve r, and then I almost wrote t for the parameter, but that was the original parameter, so let me call this theta. Okay, so the name of the circle is r sub c, and I'm going to describe it in terms of theta. Theta is a good choice here because it's really like the angle as we travel around the circle. So this is going to sweep out the circle. What we do is we start at the center, and we add to that the radius r times cosine of theta times the unit tangent vector, plus the radius times sine of theta times the unit normal vector. We wanna go once around the circle, so the domain for the parameter theta will go from zero to two pi. 
Okay, theta is the parameter for our circle. C is a constant vector. For us, that will be this vector, negative 1 half, 1 over 2 root 2, 7 over 6. R is a constant number. We found that to be square root of 2 for this particular situation. Likewise, t hat and n hat are established vectors. So the only quantity in this equation, which is like a variable, is this parameter theta. So now let's fill in those pieces of information. We have that the center was negative 1 half, 1 over 2, root 2, and 7 over 6. And then we have r times cosine of theta times the unit tangent vector. I'm going to go ahead and multiply square root of 2 times this leading 1 half and write square root of 2 over 2 times 1 square root of 2, 1 times cosine of theta. And then similarly, the radius times this leading 1 over square root of 2, those will just cancel out. So r times n hat is just going to be the vector negative 1, 0, 1. So the final piece of this will be the vector negative 1, 0, 1 times sine of theta. Okay, let's put it all together. The x-coordinate for our parametric description is negative 1 half plus square root of 2 over 2 cosine of theta minus sine of theta. The y component is the constant 1 over 2 root 2. And then square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 is just going to be 1. So we get plus cosine of theta plus 0. And then the z component is 7 over 6 plus square root of 2 over 2 cosine of theta plus sine of theta. Let me switch over to a movie now where we will see the unit tangent and normal vectors. I'll also put the binormal vector there. We will identify the osculating plane and then we'll have the radius, center, and osculating circle. After the movie, what I'm going to do is show you why this formula is what it is. So we'll justify the form of this expression. Here's the parametric curve R of t. Along this curve, we have the point r of 1 when t equals 1. At this point, we calculate the unit tangent vector, the unit normal vector, and the unit binormal vector. The unit tangent and normal vectors both live in the osculating plane, so the unit binormal vector is orthogonal to this plane. In this particular graphic, because it's a three-dimensional picture on a flat screen, it's a little bit misleading, but I will rotate it at the end so that you can really see the geometry. The normal vector points us along the radius of the osculating circle. The radius can be longer or shorter. For this particular example, it's longer. So we go along the unit normal vector until we get to this point. This is going to be the center of the osculating circle. This is the circle which is most tangent to the curve when t equals 1. Okay, just to give you a couple different perspectives for this three-dimensional graphic, let me rotate it around. Here, you can really see that t and n live in the plane, but the unit binormal is perpendicular to the plane. And then if I can point b straight at us, then you'll be able to see t and n are both unit vectors, and they are also perpendicular to each other. OK, so I think that's about what I would like to see. OK, let me just rotate it a little bit more. Right there, you can really see that t, n, and b are mutually perpendicular to each other. T and N live in the osculating plane, but B is orthogonal to it. And then our osculating circle is the circle which is most tangent to that curve at that point. What I think this kind of illustration demonstrates is that the unit tangent, normal, and binormal vectors are a frame of vectors which is really designed for the curve. So the way that they are situated in space is based on the geometry of this curve. Let's wrap up this lesson with a look at why this formula for the osculating circle is what it is.
Instead of deriving this formula from scratch, what I would like to do is show you that it must be this way. So we'll start with this and verify that this does describe the oscillating circle. So in this picture of XYZ space, I've indicated the center of the circle here. Remember, that's a constant vector. Let's come up with conditions that would indicate that for some value of the parameter theta, R sub C of theta, which should be a point on our oscillating circle, does indeed live on the oscillating circle like I've sketched here. There are two conditions that we want to check. The first is that this point is on the oscillating plane. And the second is that within the plane, it's on the circle. So here's how I would like to approach this argument. Let's work with this equation by subtracting that constant center over to the left-hand side. We can call this left-hand side, how about just the vector u? Through vector subtraction, we see that u can be pictured on this diagram like this. So that c plus u is the vector r sub c. This vector r sub c must be the position vector for a point on the plane if this radial vector u is orthogonal to the binormal vector b hat, because that vector is orthogonal to the plane. So the vector b hat should be perpendicular to u. If r sub c fell short of the plane, so if we ended our vector here where I'm indicating, then u would form an obtuse angle with the vector b that I just sketched, and if it went beyond the plane, then the angle would be acute. Okay, so that will be our test to determine if this points to a vector which lives on the oscillating plane. And then from this graphic, you can deduce what the other condition needs to be, and that is that the length of u should be the length of the radius. We will check two conditions that u dot b is zero, and that the length of u is r, the radius of the oscillating circle. To check the first condition, let's take u and dot it with the binormal vector. Let's replace u with this right-hand side. r cosine of theta, I'll just write plain old t, plus r sine of theta times n, all of that dotted with a unit binormal vector. So for the example that we were looking at, each of these vectors is being evaluated at the moment when the parameter is one, but we'll just write t, n, and b. We can distribute that dot product and get r cosine of theta t dot b plus r sine of theta n dot b. And then realize that each of these dot products is zero because t, n, and b are all mutually orthogonal. So we have passed the first test. For the second test, what we can say is that the length of u squared is the dot product of u with itself. Substituting in the right-hand side, we can say that's r cosine theta t plus r sine theta n dotted with itself. Expanding this dot product on the bottom left, we're going to get r squared cosine squared theta t dot t plus two copies of r squared cosine theta sine theta t dot n plus r squared sine squared n dot n. Okay, and again, we're working with an orthonormal set of vectors, so vectors which are all unit length, which means t dot t is one, as is n dot n, and then which are mutually perpendicular so that t dot n is zero. Recognizing that, we now have r squared cosine squared theta plus zero plus r squared sine squared theta, which overall tells us that the square of the length of u is r squared. Therefore, the length of u is r. Verifying our second condition, and now we're done. I hope you enjoyed seeing this geometric reasoning behind the equation of the oscillating circle. Thank you for your attention.